Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. This is Think Tech Hawaii, <clears throat> rule of law in the new abnormal, whatever that may be. <clears throat> and we have the great pleasure and honor of having with us today, Professor Vanelia Randall, who is currently in Florida, Professor Emerita from the University of Dayton School of Law. We have Tina Patterson up north in Germantown, Maryland, right? Mediator and arbitrator par excellence. We have Professor Emeritus getting the gender right, Ben Davis from the University of Toledo School of Law and balancing out us non-academics, Jeff Portnoy all the way from Beverly Hills, our leading First Amendment and constitutional lawyer with his Hawaii lava hat out by the pool in Beverly Hills. We're getting a little feedback from, okay. Okay, well. Yeah, he's I out at the pool, so there's probably people talking. Okay, so. I was gonna tell that uh, Jeff, since Jeff's in Beverly Hills, uh, I was gonna tell the famous Beverly Hills joke, which is the uh, producer meeting with the uh, other producer for lunch, and one producer talks about himself for like two hours, and looks at his watch and says, oh, heaven, I've been talking about myself for two hours. Let's talk about you. Tell me, what do you think of me? <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit, I don't get the joke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but then I well, don't get a lot of jokes, so I have to, I'm constantly telling my son, I don't get it. All right. Okay, fair enough. It's like, <laughs> it's all about him. Everybody in Hollywood is all about themselves, okay? Okay, <laughs> got it. We get that. Okay, so that's a good, a good segue, good transition. <clears throat> we have four bright, inquiring, critical thinking minds here. What is it about right now that's on your mind? Professor Randall? What's getting your attention these days in what's uh, going on? The open air prison in Gaza, the open air prison called Gaza is on my mind. The lack of movement on, um, on uh, voting rights uh, and the lack of movement on police reform and Biden's reneging on the student loan forgiveness are the things on my mind. Okay, that gives us- uh, What's on other people's minds? minds? Okay, Tina, what about you? What's on my mind? Um, voting rights? and how it's being presented in the media, the lack of coordinated effort, the lack of inf true information about the impact regarding the ID requirements. Um, Maryland is moving to going without masks starting on Monday, the 31st of May. Um, what, what, what impact will that be? We still have a population that isn't vaccinated. And there is a subset of that population that will never be vaccinated for whatever reasons. Um, I spent a part of my morning hearing a presentation regarding allowing alcohol in the parks when we know that right now is probably one of the most tenuous times for us as a region, but also as a society. COVID has, for better, for worse, brought forward some of the more dangerous aspects of mental health but also some of our, our coping skills and mechanisms. And for some of us, it's, we've reached our breaking point. So um, knowing that there are people who are suffering from depression, other forms of mental illness, and not necessarily addressing that, especially in our minority and color co communities of color. Um, I, and the third, and it's more of a, a personal sticking point for me is the conversations that I'm hearing for, from people who are saying that they're concerned that their um, their children, and I'm talking specifically about people who would be identified as white, saying our schools schools don't want my boy, don't want my girl in their school any longer. 
those, those places are being taken by African-American students or Asian students or other students of color to which I'll, I would say that's utter poppycock. Um, I have another word I'd use offline, but it, it, it chafes me that we're still having this conversation because someone, you know, the, the response has been, well, you know, we have affirmative action that should be enough. Folks, it's, this is not about affirmative action. We are in the midst of societal change. And if this is bothering you, um, imagine what it's been like for people like Professor Davis, for Professor Randall, for me, um, who have been challenged at some point or another regarding our access to education and why we were present where we were. So those are the things that are on my mind, probably more than you wanted to hear, but those were the, the first things that came forth. No, it's absolutely wonderful. And it brings to mind, a friend asked the other day, he said, you think there's any other country in the world who, where the laws restricting open carry of alcohol are more strict than the laws about open carry of guns? <laughs> I'll drink to that. <laughs> okay, Brother Ben, what's on your mind? Uh, um, I'm happy to hear, at least last night on Rachel Maddow, talking more about civil or criminal action at the federal level with regard to the Arizona fraud that's going on. And that's mm. trying to be replicated across the country. I'm like, this should have happened a month, two months ago when this stuff started, because I considered election interference. And, I, and I'm just happy to hear that there is some murmuring, but there's no doing yet. But there needs to be some doing, because this is clearly a new game of an old game of trying to do election interference, coupled with all the 400 bills to suppress the vote. I am also absur uh, concerned about the fact that you got to have the mother of this officer's picnic, got to walk around mm. on Capitol Hill and senators' offices for the Republicans to tell them, you got, it was horrible that day. And my son died, and you need to vote for what we're talking about. And the fact that this uh, this person is getting this kind of message, which is our condolences, but we're not going to do it, tells me that it really is like that Hollywood joke I was thinking about. It's all about me. There is nothing going on in these people's heads except what's just anything about an angle on themselves. And I mean, really, it's a, it's a tragedy. And uh, I don't know what, it, literally, the, the absence of anything that could be even called uh, rational conscience seems appalling. Um, the other thing that's on my mind is I just read a piece about the military commissions down in Guantanamo. And it was interesting is that the judge in one of these cases had said that if the defense can prove this person was tortured, then we, I'll reduce the sentence. Form, if we end up getting it to that point. And now there's a agreement that's basically being done to get that decision vacated as part of a, of a plea deal for the guy to get less than years. In other words, the CIA doesn't want anything to come out about how they tortured this guy and other guys, and they're willing to give the guy fewer years so they can basically walk after sitting there for 12 years if they can get this decision vacated that the, that the military judge did. It's an abomination that we are at this point, this far along, that the, uh, the truth about all of what happened is not out and that no one's been prosecuted. It's, you know, I was thinking today, well, now maybe there's something more I can do on this, but it, it's off. Um, beyond that, Arizona and, uh, and, and Guantanamo, beyond that, it's uh, just, the various types of, I think, good laws that are being proposed that have passed the House that are sitting in the Senate under McConnell, who, by the way, is a descendant of a slave owner. And he acts like a descendant of a slave owner in the way that he's operating on this thing. They really don't care about people. And it's just, a tr it's awful. It's awful. That's what I'm thinking about. Okay. Hey, Brother Jeff? Can you unmute and share what's on your mind? I think the country is as divided as it's ever been since the Civil War. I think the issue of racism has completely divided the country as 
never before, at least in the last century. The bills that are passing in so many states to forbid the teaching of racism is to me the most profound impact on where society in this country is in maybe the last 150 years. When you can't get agreement on a commission to investigate the storming of the Capitol, you know that this country is so bitterly divided between old white men and, and women, all of the new emerging strong willed uh, other ethnic and other groups of people as white people become petrified that they're going to quote, lose control of their country. And you can criticize the Senate all you want, but what you have to remember is they are representing, those 50 Republicans are representing 40% of the country. And that's the scary part. And what's happening in state legislatures makes what's happening in Washington almost insignificant. So that's what's bothering me. When you can no longer teach, and I think it's six states, and I expect it'll be a lot more than that before it's over, the principles of racism, you know this country is at a crossroads. And what's been so discouraging about all of the discussion about eliminating racism is, is that they have used a concept that doesn't at all uh, do what they say it does to, and to scare people because critical race theory, and I was teaching when the concepts of critical race theory was developed in legal education. And it developed as a legal concept of understanding how race impacts the law and the interpretation of law. And it has, it, the idea that it's taught in schools is beyond my mind. I, I wish it was, <laughs> you know, but critical race theory is not even taught in law schools where yeah. for the most part, and so it, it is worse than a straw person to put up critical race theory. It's a lie to the public to, to rile up racists uh, who are scared and don't understand. Well, if I can jump in uh, with regards to those fearful white people out there, um, one of the things that I want to say is I just found this last week. This is uh, hot off the hot off the news. Um, I finally got a translation of a papal letter from 1478 that has been argued to be the idea, uh, the place where the idea of white supremacy was initiated. It was basically the one that started the Spanish Inquisition, distinguishing Jews and uh, the Africans who came up from Africa and, treat, and, and the way they were going to be treated and all that. And so um, the idea of that particular papal bull, and there's other ones that are related to it. Anyway, I wrote a piece on this up in SSRN. But the, uh, the translation into English of it for the first time happened last week by a guy at the uh, Library of Congress named uh, Andrew, Andrew Gaudio, who's my co-author. And it's worth the read from 1478 to see how little we have progressed as people in the 550 odd years since then. The other thing I wanted to say about that is when I sent this to a guy, he sent me court decisions or an article where he cited to pre-Civil War court decisions where there was all kind of stuff about the natural state of blacks to be slaves, you know, the religious a uh, heathen thing, all that, were in court decisions. So how can you have six states that have law schools where people will study law and they'll do pre-Civil War law and there are cases which speak about this and you're not supposed to say something. I mean, what, you can't talk about Dred Scott? Well, you can't talk about any of these cases? You know what I mean? It's just but unbelievable. The thing is, 
the thing that I think, my understanding, and I've been following this, the, the thing, my understanding, and I haven't actually read the laws, so I'm speaking off the top of my head, but my understanding is those laws are mis, are, are misconstrued because they're focused on stopping the teaching of race and racism in, in K through 12. Right. Am I wrong on that? Yeah, well, it, it, it's designed to stop teaching that one race has been uh, less than friendly to other races. I'll put it that way. But K okay. through 12. It's, well, it's, about, it's about maintaining ignorance okay. of everyone by, right. by doing a K through 12, and then you get you get these people who've spent their whole life, which it's interesting to me because during my teaching of race and racism in the law, what I found is, is it, it wasn't being taught. So it wasn't like I was getting students okay, uh, coming to law school who understood the racial history of America. No, they didn't understand. They didn't understand the racial history of their own group. And they had little understanding of the racial history of their own group, legal racial history of their own group, and no understanding of anyone else. So uh, this issue of te not teaching race and racism, I think, is, is like to hammer people over the head, to give them a stick when, they, uh, when, because, when someone feels bad about having something done in a in an elementary of school, I it doesn't seem to be focused at this stage on colleges and law school. Okay, well then, what it is is it's threatening uh, teachers at the you know the teachers who speak to these things to get yes. them fired. That's one thing. The other thing is you know I went to fifth grade and sixth grade. We learned about Columbus. We learned about Vasco da Gama going around uh, Africa. We learned about uh, all those uh, people. But what we didn't learn about was that the issue was that the Mediterranean trade routes were dominated by Muslims. And so the Europeans are trying to find a way around. And that's what was prompting a lot of that stuff. We heard just generally the let's go west uh, to go east uh, thing of Columbus. But what we didn't learn about were things like uh, the kinds of things that you read about in these, uh, in the in the particular letters that uh, Pope, popes did, like in the mid fifteenth uh, century, where there's a pope who blessed for the Portuguese and the Spaniards the perpetual enslavement of Africans. That but, I didn't learn about. I had to learn but, that but, now at sixty five. But the most but profound, you can't teach that now. the most profound problem is the increasing trend of state legislatures trying to impose on the educational system what can be taught and what can't be taught. It's more than just the race issue, which is now the prominent yeah. issue. 10 years ago, it was religion. Five years from now, it'll be women's rights. And Climate frankly, change. frankly, yeah. I think you know, this is, may sound a little bit weird, but in my view, we're back in the Reconstruction era. Yes. We, we are yes. back in Reconstruction. <laughs> well, I think we're not back in Reconstruction. We're, we're, the reconstruction would, would, would be a decent time. It's back after Reconstruction. But exactly. the thing is, is my, my, okay. Redemption. Okay. Case, we'll redemption. Well, Case books are limited in size. What can be taught is limited in, con in context. And Texas has always used their power to control, as in my lifetime, Texas has always used that. It's not, it, this, it's focused on race now. But it's and it's all has been focused on race. Even if I can remember instances throughout my career where Texas objected to something being taught a certain way, and the casebook authors saying, 
okay, we'll take it out the case book. Right. The, the extension right. now is to put liability on teachers who are are going to develop their own because there's all develop their own materials, to develop their own lesson plans. And so they're saying, oh, wait a minute, it's not enough not to have it in the casebook because teachers can go outside and get stuff already developed. So we're going to make it uh, 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 make it where if they bring race into the classroom, uh, racism in the classroom, uh, and so they, they're controlling more than the casebook now, and I think that is something new. Well, it's, it's going to be a fascinating court battle as it works its way to the Supreme Court, is whether a state can pass a law limiting teachers' free speech rights as it yep. relates to political, social, and moral issues. Absolutely. Academic freedom. And also, here's the thing. The kids in the classroom, guess what? They'll bring it up. The kids will bring it up. What's the teacher supposed to do in response? But I don't really think this is an academic, as much as I wish it was an academic freedom issue, I don't think it's an academic freedom issue. I don't either. Well, we can argue about that, but I do think it's an academic freedom in terms of what a, a, a teacher does in their classroom. I know that there are restrictions when it's under K-12, uh, uh, K-12, and the K-12 speech. But, but I, if you think about colleges and law school, <laughs> As a law professor who tried to teach race and racism and was punished for teaching race and racism in a law school and was told that it was not an academic freedom issue, the, it, the whole point of academic freedom isn't that you get unlimited, uh, I don't agree. Okay, let me, I am articulating what was told to me and how it's used. Academic freedom, that there is a limit to wh what you can do in a classroom based on what your school kind of says is academic right. freedom. And if the school is not saying it's academic freedom, if they're saying is something else, like we've got to manage uh, how all the teachers are teaching the same thing. We have to manage that we are sure that the students are getting through it as if they can articulate a strong enough reason that courts will buy, right. I think that 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 it should be an academic freedom issue, but I'm not so sure that it will be. Tina, you uh, were saying well, you agree. I did. I I, I I agreed with you saying that it, this is not reconstruction. This is post reconstruction because during the reconstruction reconstruction period. We actually saw African Americans holding office. The number of African Americans in states that traditionally or now we think of as um, being very conservative and um, racist in many ways actually had representatives. Mississippi, Louisiana, for example, Texas. But also the argument that we're having now, we, I remember when I lived in Texas. It, the schools were being told to not talk about reproduction, human reproduction, and that yeah. the only thing that should be presented was abstinence. And right. if a student so, asked a question, they were supposed to repeat the mantra that abstinence was, and what did we have? High school students getting pregnant. <laughs> um, so well, it, it, it's very similar. I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead, Ben. Tina, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check, uh, second what you just said but I'm going to go farther. Yes, to Professor Randall, that's what they said to you. And to Tina, the Patterson, that's what they said to you too. But it's still an academic freedom issue. They're just trying to sell us a point of view about what they consider to be academic freedom that they think can run before a court, okay? But I, I'm going to say that it is an academic freedom as to what a, a teacher can teach in a classroom whether it's first grade or 12th grade or senior year in college or in graduate school in terms of the content of the course that they're teaching and that the school will have certain 
things that it wants to have covered is one thing, but that the teacher doesn't uh, is uh, is allowed to be is required to be intellectually bankrupt in the terms of how they teach because of some strictures is I think in real impingement on the role of teacher that uh, that uh, should be viscerally rejected as a uh, as a uh, as a limit on what is academic freedom in its true sense, not in sort of the corporate vision kind of senses that I'm hearing here of trying to essentially restrict what we think. Yeah, but, see, let me, let me, but Ben, my, my problems with academic freedom is I can very easily imagine a white supremacist teaching white supremacy in the classroom with my with my son in the classroom and then claiming academic freedom. I, I mean, it's, it is not, I think that to say that it's all up to teacher to decide what content is to be taught is really problematic uh, because, because we don't control that, okay? what content, content right. well, is being taught. Listen, I had professors who did that. I'm saying I had professors who did that. I was in the And you're saying it's for, their right to do that, to teach your fifth grader a white supremacy. The, the academic freedom issue is a left and a right issue, as we all know. Uh, <laughs> so I, I don't want to limit it to, to what I really said earlier, that you know, I, I just think, and, and to clarify my reconstruction thought, what I was meaning was a period of time where laws were being passed only because of their racial impact. Yes, back then it was whites giving blacks additional freedoms or powers, quote unquote. And then, of course, what happened after reconstruction seems now we're in a period of time where state legislatures are passing laws driven by race the other way. So th th that's what I meant. Uh, yeah, I think I, uh, yeah, I understand if that. We had a, yeah. I but agree you know, with that. Uh, what, what, I, what I just want to point out and have us talk about is, we've talked about this for months, of what would happen when Biden got elected and would the country turn and would the divisions uh, get minimized? Frankly, I think the divisions now are as bad if not worse, and do any of you see any hope in the immediate two years up to the 2022 election that any of these divisions are going to be compromised in the right way? Yes. yes. Or how about the left wing? How about oh. the Democrat? Don't put because the Democrats are just as uh, uh, they are problematic in, their, in a different way. Yeah, they, you know, they because they could, you know, they they have to do all the things that they need to do, but they're trying to protect bipartisan. I don't. You said in the next two years, I don't see in the rest of my lifetime. So <laughs> I don't. We're out whatever of whatever amount of time that is. I'm a resolute optimist. Hang on, man. That's a that's a very optimistic way to end the show. I like it. It is. It is. We're out of time for today. But we've gone beyond just voter repression, educational repression. We're literally talking about not just expression repression, but thought repression. Yeah. And we're talking about racially based, caste based, bias based thought repression. It's overt, it's violent, and it's unapologetic. Yeah. Hold that thought for a couple of weeks, come back. Well, you have to bring us back to that because if you start off by asking us what's on in mind, this ain't going to be what's on my mind. It's going to be whatever happened in the last two weeks. I well, concur, remember, yes. Everyone, remember when Frederick Douglass despaired in Boston, told you the truth stood up and said to Frederick Douglass, is God dead, Frederick? And Frederick Douglass said no, and he had hope to keep on. That's what told you the truth said. Is and on that it. note of hope, Thanks. Brother Ben, on that note of hope, we'll conclude for today. Thank Remember, you. folks, please support Think Tech's yearly fundraising drive. Come back and see us in two weeks. Send us your questions, send us your thoughts, and we will come back to this. We will not forget. Take good care. Hello. You too. Thank you so much. There you go.